welcome to the Cult Connections Review Show. I'm your host, Ian Graham, and every episode I will be joined by a guest to review what's new in the world of film and TV. So whatever takes my fancy, hopefully takes your fancy too. Come and join us on the Cult Connections Review Show. Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Ian here. I'm joined by the Nathan. How are you, Nathan? Hello, I'm very good, thank you. It's good it's good to be back. You are very welcome, Nathan. And of course we will they pretend that we haven't just been there speaking <laughs> to one another and recording episode two. Um there, but we have. Um but this is this is um Moon Knight, this is episode three, the friendly type. That's that's an interesting uh, title. Any thoughts on on the the title? I didn't actually know it was called that. Uh, so yeah, so that, that's news to me. I've obviously not been paying attention to the episode titles uh, at all. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's okay, Nathan, because uh, because last episode um, you certainly uh, showed that you have been paying. Um, their attention a lot more than I have. Or oh, your eye for Moon Knight sort of detail is is very sort of tuned in, which is really good. Um, so we open on this one. So so at so at the end of episode two, um, we see Mark. He's 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 having a, a bit of a uh, they a booze up, and he is in their Cairo. He is in Egypt. Um, so to start this one, we see Layla. I assume she's still in the London, um, and she's getting a passport to go home. So, so, um, so we found out um, there, there, Nathan, that that Layla, or, or the name Layla, isn't isn't actually part of of the Moon Knight um, in the comics, but but was Marlene Egyptian? There, Marlene certainly doesn't sound like a very like this sort of Egyptian name, but no, I don't think he was. I don't actually know where Marlene was from, um, unfortunately. Uh, but no. one thing I do have for you is the the passport that she gets issued with uh, says it was issued in twenty twenty one, which means that Mar that not Marlene Layla wouldn't have been blipped. Uh, if that's accurate, ah. so there's something for everyone okay. just to keep an eye on. Um, just a little detail for everyone. But what is noted is that they do talk about Layla's dad being an archaeologist, which lines up mm-hmm. exactly with Marlene's story. Um, so Marlene's dad was Peter Arloon or something. So what's Arloon? Mm-hmm. Does that sound French? Maybe I don't know. Um, Maybe, yeah. But he was an archaeologist, so he's probably got a similar, if not identical, backstory, or, or at least hints of it. Um, so her dad gets killed after they after they do discover Conchu's tomb uh, from there. So maybe that's maybe they're following that path. I'm, I'm sure we'll find out uh, what happened from there, especially in this episode where Arthur indicates very heavily at there being some secrets that Mark is not telling. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 So, so definitely. Um, now, now, now the person making the, the passport sounds very familiar with their Layla and the whole setup and the whole story. Mm. Um, they're, they're just called um, the, the forger. But I don't know. Is this a character from 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 the, the comics, or is this a totally new person? Not that I know of. It's not a character that I'm no. aware of. So, no. um, uh, if anyone does know, certainly tweet at us and, and let us know, because uh, that would be quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, please uh, do. That that would be absolutely brilliant. So, um, so so you can tweet us at um, the at connections. The cult. Um, that is the main their the, uh, their sort of Twitter account. So do use that one. Um, if if you do know, and uh, you know, please 
please do do so sort of prove us wrong or just um you know reinforce um our our ultimate um their wisdom and our our yeah. our their insights as well about how much that you love it um that would be brilliant <laughs> um and probably not very likely um so we see so we see Haro uh, in and his entourage and they're in in uh, they're the desert and he's using they're the scarab so and they think that they've found 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 where where sort of armor is it certainly seems that way i mean that's what we're told the scarab does is that it points towards oh. Amit's tomb, um, the, and it it's pointing them towards something. Um, we don't really ever get to we don't get to find out in this episode. So if you for any reason haven't watched Moon Knight and you're hoping for answers in this podcast, uh, we still don't have any on Amit's tomb. No, no. But presumably no, we so. will in the next one. I'm I'm fairly sure that that we will. I thought this was a bit of a. Because we never got to see the tomb and we never got to see them, we didn't even get to see them start digging. I thought this was a no. bit of a strange scene. Like, it felt... Uh, at the end of the episode, you look back on it and you go, what? Why? Why show us that? Hmm. Like, we didn't know Almost seems a little digging. bit out of... Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's from the wrong episode yeah. or something. Maybe a little bit. Maybe even a little, a little bit out of place. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Who, who, it's a bit of a nitpick. Who, um, but yeah. it almost to me, it felt like later in the episode, Arthur gets dragged into some sort of god court for trying to raise Amit. Um, so mm-hmm. it almost felt like they had to put that scene in to explain how they could bring him to be judged because otherwise he's not mm-hmm. done anything. So, but no, it was, um, True, maybe I'm yeah. nitpicking, I probably am. Um, but it just felt a no, bit weird. I'd never thought I'd never I hadn't picked up on that. But that does, yeah. And we'll get to to a scene there la- later on as well, where, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that does seem a bit odd. Um, so, so we'll have that bit, and then Bash were out in. Uh, they were back to Cairo. We see Mark. He's uh, he's uh, he's turned into a little bit of. Uh, like they're sort of James Bond. He's doing a bit, a bit of sort of parkour over the, over the, the, the roofs. He's he's chasing these these uh, three 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 their knife men. Um, so he's fighting them. Um, and I really enjoyed this because I mean we see we see Mark and he's and he's fighting and you can see the skills and he's and he's almost holding back. You know, like there's a real there's a real young sort of member of. Of the the gang, he doesn't really want there to hurt him because he's he's kind of just a child, um, and then it goes a bit weird because bam, and we will have that funny time sort of shift, and Mark's in a taxi, and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa what the hell's gone on? Um, mm. I, I I really like this bit. I thought it was it was sort of you know clever and 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 sort of did really make you think. Yeah, it's sort of it's flip reversed it from the first episode um, where Stephen's now taking control of the body and making Mark flash, and yeah, as you say, Mark's yeah. after these guy. He he was actually after the guy. He was he was looking for somebody that would have information on where Arthur Harrow is. Um, but these three presumably cult members or Amit followers have um, have killed this mm-hmm. person. So Mark tries goes to fight them to get information. Stephen's in the reflection of any object. Sometimes a mirror, sometimes a knife, whatever it is, telling Mark not to kill these people. Um, but what's interesting is after the taxi, we then he he sees the two people from the taxi all beaten up. He runs out, he chases them, and then it flashes, and he's he's killed one of them. So he's yeah. he's knifed one of them. They're dead. Yeah. And um, but. But Stephen and says to no Mark says to Stephen in the reflection, "What did you just do?" And mm-hmm. St- and Stephen says back, "Well, it wasn't me." And Mark and they're both confused because who killed them? So yeah. Um, in the comics, there is a third persona called Jake Lockley, who's a taxi driver, uh-huh. ironically, given that Mark has just run out of a taxi. All right, okay. Um, right. is it not is it nodding towards a third personality in there because there's three in the comics so 
maybe, yeah. but neither of them know who just killed this guy. Um, one of them's oh. still alive, and they try to get the young one to talk. Konshu suggests holding him off a cliff, but this guy would rather die than give up his information, so he cuts his own rope and falls to his death. So, yeah, there we are. And he did say, and yeah, and when he falls, he does mention Amit as well. Um, so, um, yeah, 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 which is an interesting one. So, um, so then, so then we see we see Mark and he's talking to the Conchu, and then Conchu says, "Right, I'm going to summon up the the gods," and then it all it all goes a bit, it all goes um it all goes a bit more more sort of epic, doesn't it? So sort of Conchu, yeah, they creates a a dead eclipse and then. Bash! They're inside the the pyramid. They're inside the the the, the great pyramid of um the 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 geezer, and it's like wow. And then here are here are the other gods' avatars. Yeah, they introduced this very very quickly. Like all of a sudden, Conchi did an eclipse, and as you say, it turned out the other Egyptian gods also have avatars on Earth. Um, and this yeah. sometimes I think the show is good because it's very fast paced, and then stuff like this happens, and I think, oh, it kind of this is going to be very harsh, but it feels like things are made up as they go because this just happened. Like, Wait, <laughs> they've not alluded to any of the other gods having avatars at all. Um, now look, there is, no. there is precedent for the for all gods of all beliefs appearing in Marvel comics. It, it's endless. Um, so there was an issue of four that had sort of a meeting of the Egyptian gods once. We're going back a long, long time for that. I didn't write down the date, unfortunately, mm-hmm. when I do the research. Um, but but yeah, this happened. And it also turned out that the Hafa or Hafor, however you say it, um, her avatar suggested that Konshu and, um, and Hafa sort of had a thing a long time ago. Yeah. So that's... Uh-huh. A bit of interesting detail, strange detail to throw in out of nowhere. But, um, there, but there we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, 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 did you get everyone there, Nathan? So, did so I get all the gods? Hatha. Yes, I did. Well, I'm not. I, I did because yeah, there's Horus. Yep. Yes, there's Hafa, Horus, um, Isis, uh, Tefna, and Osiris. Uh huh. And uh, right, okay, so. I am actually going to write them down because I didn't quite get all of them. Uh, excellent stuff. Yeah, so it's uh, yep. So we're in, so we're in this this sort of, you know, sort of court. Haru gets uh, summoned again. Yes. Yeah, so you're right. It might be that um, uh, they need sort of proof of them up to no sort of good, but actually they they decide that there's no sort of case there to answer. Um, so he's kind of let sort of go as it were a pretty a, a pretty feeble sort of court. It's interesting to know that um, because Haro has sort of spoke about Conchu in in lots of very negative sort of terms about you know he's violent and he brings sort of chaos and yeah um this sort of destruction, but. But it's almost like the other gods; they don't, they don't actually care. They don't, they, they, they really don't sort of care about about what's going on. Um, it's you know almost like they're they're sort of blind to um, to sort of they, earth really. And yeah, they say they're there to observe, which is exactly what um the eternals were told that they're there to do they're there to to help mm-hmm. and observe they're not there to interfere with the whatever of man whatever the term is the um so again yeah very very weak in that sense um are the gods at this point in the marvel universe so um that usually yeah. means they're up to something um so they probably are one thing that was mentioned was um the overvoid um, which is the uh, which is a place where the the gods are the Egyptian gods kind of live mm-hmm. in the Marvel comics. That's kind of their little realm. 
um, in the same way that like Asgard is where the Norse gods yeah. are. So uh-huh. that's just a little bit of a an interesting thing. Um, but yeah, the gods kind of making it clear that they're there just to observe, and and Arthur does a good job of twisting things and accusing Conchu of using Mark and saying Mark is sick. He doesn't know who he is. Loads of mm-hmm. all the personalities and stuff, and yeah, the gods do side of him. But Haffa does sort of believe Mark and talks to Mark after and tells him to look for for a Magi or the sarcophagus of a Magi, um, whose name I've just realized I did not mm-hmm. write down. So I do apologize <laughs> for that poorly uh, researched. I, I, <laughs> I didn't actually quite sort of catch that one um, uh, there myself. So, um, yep, so, so Mark is now looking for the their sarcophagus and and their Layla turns up so and they they sort of reconcile a little bit they're they're on a boat and they're sort of talking their Cairo at 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 night looks looks lovely it's uh you know lots of lovely lights and it's um um however this this did get me thinking because the 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 previous scenes that we've seen so sort of Cairo, um, the, the cinematography is quite, I liked it, um, but Cairo looks quite, it's like it was overcast. It even looked a little bit sort of cold. Um, I don't know what you thought thought, thought about that then, Nathan. I, I would usually expect it to be a bit brighter and maybe a little bit warmer feeling, but it was... Yeah, so yeah, I think the cinematography of the show was good. We didn't get a lot of establishing shots of like Egypt or anything like that because the show is just no. so fast paced. Um, uh, but but yeah, there was there's always some good cinematography in this show, particularly in the way they're trying to capture which personality is in control at every, any given time. But a lot of this episode just takes place mm-hmm. at night, <laughs> like we sort of get the daytime. For a bit, and then yeah. they're off to they're off to Senfu's sarcophagus. There we go. I just found it. Sen- <laughs> Senfu's sarcophagus. Um, yeah. But but yeah, but they they go to look f- they go to look for that. Mark goes and speaks to someone in the street uh, and says he's looking for it. And then, boom, Layla's back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so like you say, so they so they sort of talk and, and um again it sort of alludes to to Mark and Layla's past and what happened with, with her dad. Um I think obviously that's gonna play out as we go on. That's that's gonna be a big a big part of, of the story. Um so they go to visit um Anton Mogart, I think his name is. Um, who strides around like a proper like he's got he's got got sort of big balls, doesn't he? He's uh, he, he's, he's he's sort of proper full of himself. This this bloke. Yeah, uh, fans of the comics might know this guy as Midnight Man. So again, we're going uh-huh. back to a lot a very long time ago in Moon Knight's chronology, Moon Knight issue three, uh, and he's just a jewel and an art thief. Uh, right. So, so there we go. One interesting detail before we get there is that um, when Layla walks up to Beck, um, who is like the security guard who let who lets them in, uh, when uh-huh. Anton is riding on his horses and he talks about Madripoor. So Madripoor is the city where Zemo, Bucky, and um, and Sam, sorry, Captain America. Um, Falcon yeah, go to uh-huh. to find Sharon Carter in in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They go to that big that big city to look for them there. So, what connection do they have yeah. to what went down there? It's just another little MCU kind of giving us an idea of where in the timeline yeah. they are. Um, so, I always forget yeah. Falcon's like character's name for some reason. It just does Sam just doesn't stick in my head for whatever reason. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, yeah. So so again, that that is sort of tying things up. We don't know if there'll be any 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 sort of crossover, but there are some some little sort of hints there. Um, now this is interesting. So so obviously Mogart has these 
the sarcophagus. Do you, they want there to see it? Um, however, Mark knows nothing. This is the, this is the interesting part. So Mark knows nothing about about any of of the of the the um, their sort of history, and he needs to, he needs Stephen's knowledge. That's the thing. So and uh, and sort of Leila's Leila is she's sort of hinting at that. She's like you know let you know let sort of Stephen in. Um, it's interesting because now, you know, there is some mental health sort of themes that go on, 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 on the, there throughout this. Obviously, you know, Mark and 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 there, Stephen, and and we see it from from a point of view where it looks like Mark's actually talking to himself. Um, you know, sort of they're sort of responding maybe to. Uh, to uh, their sort of voices, or that's what you maybe would think if you if you just sort of saw them, saw them sort of doing that. Um, yeah, it was. But it was then really uh, it all... uh, so it was really interesting to see. So yeah, they're having to try and align these sort of I don't know what they are these maps that are in the sarcophagus of this Medjay yeah. to give them the star location, which will point them to where the tomb of Amit is. Um, and sort of Layla's having to distract Antoine and his guards after they convinced them, him to let them have a look at this sarcophagus that he's just like got got on display in this glass pyramid. And um, yeah, so Stephen's having to guide Mark through doing this because it's completely reversed. This time, Mark won't give <laughs> Stephen the right to use the, their yeah. body. So it's completely uh-huh. it's completely flipped. Um, Mark obviously screws it up almost immediately, <laughs> uh, but which gives us kind of the only real solid bit of action in this episode. We had a little fight earlier, but this is this is the main event, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, haha. So, yep. So, so yes. Yeah, so Mark. So I think, um, yeah. Yeah. So the heavy t- turns has gone on Mark, and he very quickly sort of gets it off. Him. I love that bit. Um, uh, they're sort of, you know, Haru Haru turns up and then it all goes wrong. So 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 there's all these gunmen and uh, and 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 everything sort of going on. Mark summons the suit. Um. So we have a big fight and there's all of the horsemen and so on and then and then and then actually Mister Knight there turns up and uh, it all goes a bit wrong for him. So. <laughs> It does, yeah, and the fight kicks off because um, Antoine quite kind of points out, "Oh, there's a third party appearing, and who is it?" But Arthur Harrow, and this is where um, um, Arthur kind of puts the seeds of doubt in Layla's mind about what happened to her father. So, um, uh-huh. yeah, he sort of says that you keep thinking distance will prevent the wounds from your father's murder from reopening. But something stands in your way. Your husband doesn't tell you the truth. Is the exact quote that um, that yeah it's said. Obviously, Ethan Hawke says it in a better way than I just did. Um, but that's sort of where the doubt comes in uh, to the, to the mind, and everyone starts fighting after that uh, because Moon Knight appears, and and yes, yeah, so it was quite sort of a, a rash reaction really from from Mark. He, he sort of suited yeah. up and just started killing everyone. He's obviously trying to hide things um, in a big way. And it's a good fight. Um, uh, we get to see Moon Knight get speared a bit, and then he sort of goes a bit into sort of rage mode from there. And afterwards, Konshu is stood atop a clock, um, which is set at midnight, uh, maybe hinting towards, as I said earlier, Anton's known as Midnight Man in the comics. Uh, but he just says, TikTok, uh-huh. Mark Spector. TikTok. So, what deal did Mark make with Konshu? Hmm. Well, I suppose we will find out as a, as it goes on, and 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 it whips ahead. So, um, so they win the fight. Well, or or like or like everybody dies basically. Pretty so, nice. uh, um, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. They're pretty much so. So Steve, uh, so so Mark, um, Layla, and 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 they conchu at this point. So so they're so they're out in in uh, they 
the the desert. Um, now this bit's interesting. So, so Mark Mark again knows he can't he can't help. So the um, so the sarcophagus kind of blew up, or it went on fire, and they've just got some some sort of scraps yeah, left. He used is he kind of tempted Antoine with some with more power, um, and sort of used his 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 little stick that he's obviously got from Amit um, in some way and, and set the sarcophagus on fire using that purple magic again, uh, which yeah. we don't know a lot about, but I'm sure we'll find out in the second half of so the series. It's a fragment of Amit's power at one point. Yeah. Just a tiny bit of, of sort of Amit's power. So um, now this bit's interesting here. So, so, so Layla basically says, look, look, we need Steven. Um, and Mark Mark surrenders there the body, lets sort of Stephen out, and Stephen's patching up up there the 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 bits that are left of the there the tapestry or or whatever it is you know the the um uh, there the cloth. Now the now the bit that I found fascinating here is that. It's almost like Layla prefers Stephen. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the way she was looking at him. I mean, he is uh, he is a nicer guy certainly than what Mark is. Mark's obviously he's quite he's quite sort of troubled. He's violent. He's uh, you know he's not he's not the warmest of chaps. Uh, you know, Stephen is a he is a, he is a nice bloke, isn't he? So, um, but yeah, you can see that it's almost like oh well, Layla Layla's Layla's kind of thinking, no, oh, you know, I kind of prefer this one than than the uh, the yeah. the one that I've had already. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> like it, it, it's odd. Yeah, the way they look at each other. But Stephen, he, he, the fragments got burnt up a little bit, but they Stephen managed to put them back together. Um, but as he points out, using his knowledge, that they can't work out where the stars are, despite Layla using a fancy iPad app to look at what yeah. constellation <laughs> is on the on the uh, whatever material it, it is that Egyptians would have done yeah. that on. Um, Steve says, no, no, this is what the night sky would have looked like 2,000 years ago. So as you say, stars don't move a lot, but they do move. Um, yeah. And um, so this is where Konshu kicks in, and we finally get to see Konshu do something very grand and kind of says, I re- he says, I remember every night. And they go up to the top of a dune, and he reverses the night sky to what it would have looked like 2,000 years ago. Yeah, 2,000 years, years ago. But this and triggers... What I found the... in to... Sorry, go on. Yeah, but um, so just before that part, though, Nathan, Nathan and what's what sort of, um, you know, fascinating about this little bit is that, you know, Conchu actually realises he works with their Stephen. He, he realises, oh, it's Stephen, actually, that we need for this part. He's got the knowledge. He works with them. Um, he's almost nice to Stephen, and up until that point, he's you know he's called him a worm and mm-hmm. you know all kinds of stuff. You know he's he's not nice there to Stephen. So um, I thought this this bit was actually quite quite sort of good. Again, it sort of changes the, the dynamic maybe a little bit. Um, it does because even when they go up onto the dune and and he needs. Um, Mark or Stephen to be copying his his hand motions because he works through them. Yeah, um, he doesn't change back to Moon Knight. He doesn't change back to Mark. It's Mister Knight who's at uh-huh. the, who's at the top of there doing doing this. Yeah, um, and Konshu risks it all to do this because he knows the gods threatened him earlier with their version of banishment, which is essentially mm-hmm. trapping them in sort of a stone figure, almost like an Egyptian figure, if you can imagine those those little things and he knows this mm-hmm. is going to happen and it is what happens. Um, but it, yeah, you are right. I hadn't really clocked that, but it is interesting that he never, he doesn't change back to Mark and Conchu yeah. still mm-hmm. does it. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. In fact, yeah. Conchu's last words uh-huh. are uh, tell Mark to find me or to free me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think he actually calls this David by his name and, you know, and tells him there to make the, you know the movements that they need to do. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, you know. You know. Put the sky back, which is which was amazing. And then, um, yeah. And that was, and that was it. So we see Conchu. He's in this. He's in this sort of figure. This 
this um the says so leads us with a lot of questions because are Mark and Steven still going to be fighting for the body? Do they have any of their powers still? Because conchu has gone. He's in this figure. Because conchu has gone, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. All we see is um, Mark or Steven fall to the ground and Layla trying to, trying to wake him up. And yeah. uh, then Arthur Harrow is back in the Great Pyramid. He's been let in um, by, is it Horace, the, the guy? Uh-huh. Yeah. Horace, yeah. And he gets to go talk to the figure of Conchu and tells him that basically what's about to happen is, is his fault. But he thanks him for, for giving him the trauma to try and do this. So, hmm. so they're in a bad place. So, yeah. Yep. 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 So we're halfway through. Um, yeah. And like you say, we are in a bad day place. So we need to see what's going on. I would imagine it's going to get even worse in the next episode. Um, if I'm going to predict, I would imagine that Ahmet will sort of wake up, will be resurrected and, and also, sort of hell's gonna break loose. Yeah, I would have thought so. Yeah. So yeah. how we and it is worth we mentioning kind of just that. at the end of the episode, um, the guy that played Antoine, a Moga or Midnight Man, uh, was played by a guy called Gaspard Ulier. I think that's how mm-hmm. that's his name. Who sadly yeah. died earlier mm-hmm. this year in a skiing accident. Yeah. So there was a nice nod to him in the episode as well. And um, no, I thought he put in a, a stellar performance. It was a I, I, yes. he, he, he was, and I'll say for why, because I, I did mention it. Um, he's very arrogant. He's not very likable, but to be able to portray a character like that does does actually take their skill. And he, uh, yeah, he did. He absolutely nailed it. So, um, so yeah, it's it's nice to it's nice to say that. And actually, he did he did he played a great their role, and it's and it's a shame that we that we won't. We won't actually get to see any more more of that, but um, yeah, but yeah, a great episode. It, it whizzed along. It's it's um, you know, and there to think, you know, Nathan. In just over two hours, we've gone from um, you know, central London, a very, a very, a very quiet and nice sort of guy, and 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 wish we're in. Their Egypt and 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 their big and nasty things are are about there to happen. So, um, as as a journey, it's been absolutely brilliant so far. Um, and we will be back very very soon to do episode four. We don't know what the title is of that yet, but then Nathan, you will be taking notes. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I'll remember to write down the title this time. I'll note the title yeah. down as well. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I will say, Nathan, thank you once again. Oh, no, always a pleasure. So looking forward to episode four, and seeing what what happens next. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Uh, so once again, thanks everyone, and latest gears.